I, don't, I wasn't going to tell the story because it takes so much time, but I just feel real led to do this. Um, so 15 years ago, we were building this massive sanctuary, millions and millions of dollars. And so what you do is when you get ready to build a building, you do a building program, right? You know, uh, fundraisers. And so we were going around and meeting with all the people in the church and, and asking them to make a commitment for two years, capital campaign. And say, what would you, what would you be willing, what is the Lord asking you to give over the next two years towards our, our facility? Because we needed a certain amount to, to get started on the building. And so, of course, what would God do? He would say, well, you know, I mean, Jim and I were like seeking the Lord also. Like, we want to lead the way. We want to be the example. If God's asking us to ask you that, we feel like we've got to do that, you know, too. And so we were asking the Lord, what would he have us to give? And, and we felt, both of us separately, that God was asking us to give one year's salary over a two years' time. Now, I'm not real good at math, but I knew that when we made that commitment, that meant that we had to cut our spending by at least 50%, right? To give 50% for both years of what we were making. into So that meant cutting out everything. Like anything that was a monthly bill, we got rid of it. I sold my car, so we were now a one-car family. I got rid of my cell phone. We got rid of uh, my housekeeper, you know, and no nails and no shopping. No shopping for two years. And, you know, I went to Bible school for to become a missionary. So I'm thinking, I could do this. I'm just going to pretend I'm in Africa somewhere in the bush and there's no Walmart and there's no Target and I could do this, you know. I'm just going to give this to the Lord. The Lord's asking us to do this and I say yes. Come on, we say yes to when God asks us to do things and, and so I said yes to the Lord. I said yes to Jim. I said yes to the church, you know. Well, it wasn't too long, just a couple of months after that commitment that the spirit of shopping just seemed to come upon me at the most unexpected moments of my life and it was a battle like I've never had a struggle with drug addiction or cigarette smoking but I have definitely battled the shopping demon let me tell you the spirit of shopping and so one Sunday after church what we do is Jim always lays on the couch and he watches sports and I usually go in the bedroom and read the newspaper and then watch a movie or something like that until I take my Sunday afternoon nap well, I'm just kind of flipping through. We don't have satellite or direct TV or anything, so I'm trying to figure out what channels are even on the TV at this time, you know? And I come across this, this, this show that I'd never seen before. Remember, this is 15, 16 years ago, and it was Home Shopping Network. <laughs> Honest to God, I had never watched that show in my whole life. But on this day, on this Sunday afternoon, who is on Home Shopping Network but Wolfgang Puck selling the most beautiful stainless steel pots and pans you have ever seen. And I'm telling you, just like Eve in the Garden of Eden, a serpent came into my room and began to speak to me and say, Becky, you need those pots and pans. It's Hell's Shopping Network. Hell's Shopping okay. And I heard it, and I felt it in my very being. It was good. It was pleasing to my sight. <laughs> you need those pots and pans. If you, Becky, would buy those pots and pans, you would actually become a good pastor's wife and have people over for dinner. Those pots and pans are the things that you need to improve your life. And I began to think, you know what? My husband pastors a large church. I, I need... I need new pots and pans. I deserve those pots and pans. I want those pots and pans. I'm going to buy those pots and pans. And I'd never done it before in all my life. Now I'm an expert at it, but I pulled out my credit card, you know, and if you put in your credit card number on this certain number, you call the number, and I didn't have a cell phone, so I'm on the landline, but I'm literally under the covers in my bedroom. So I'm under the covers in my bedroom, trying to talk on the phone, putting in my credit card number. And Jim comes in the door. And he says, well, Becky, what are you doing under the covers? And I'm like, oh, I'm just talking. He's like, who are you talking to? And I lied. I went straight to hell. Do not pass go. Go straight to the pit of hell. I lied to my husband. And I said, oh, I'm talking to our son, Ross. At the time, he was at Texas Tech University. 
He kept walking in and out. I kept hanging up the phone and starting all over again. Finally, I just said, forget it, hung up the phone. But the next day, I went into work, which is our church. I'm at our church where they pay me to work for the church. And I get on the computer, homeshoppingnetwork.com. And I pull it up and I find it. And I'm putting it in my shopping cart, shopping cart, shopping cart, shopping cart, shopping cart. And I get ready to, I put in my credit card and I get ready to push, buy, purchase. And this thought comes through my mind. What are you going to say if Jim's at home when those boxes show up? And for some reason, the more I thought about it later, I'm thinking, well, I could have given a different address. I could have done different things. But it was just like, oh, wow, what am I going to do? How am I even going to cook on those things? Because Jim's going to ask, where did those pots and pans come from? <laughs> and so I, 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 I deleted it. I didn't put it. But, you know, the moment I deleted that, this wave of shame and guilt came over me. And the enemy came in again. He was still there. He was just like, you are such a hypocrite. You stand up there every Sunday preaching and telling people and praying. And here you are. You're a liar. You're a manipulator. You, you know, your husband would be better off without you. I mean, I went deep and dark place. And, and that was, I was familiar with that spirit. That self-hatred spirit, that feeling of never being enough and never being good enough and always being a failure, being, you know, just unworthy of, of anything. And, and so that would, I carried that again, you know, it came on me heavy like never before. And um, so that was all day Monday. And then Tuesday, you guys, was my birthday. And I had been prophesied, it had been prophesied that we would start a new women's ministry. Cindy Jacobs had prophesied over me at our 10 year anniversary there at the church. And, and so we were getting ready to launch this brand new women's ministry through our church called Girlfriends. And I decided that I would have our first, um, meeting to tell people about girlfriends on my birthday because they would come, right? They would come for my birthday and then I'd hook them into volunteering for this women's ministry. And so I went through the whole motions. It was a great night. You know, we had all kinds of fun women thing there and we got a bunch of, shared the vision. But the whole time as I'm sharing the vision, I'm thinking you're, you're a failure. You know, you're just, you're a hypocrite. People don't, if they knew, if they knew what you had done, Becky, they wouldn't, you know, even want to have anything to do with you or Trinity Church, you know, all of this carrying on. And so after, after the meeting, they sing happy birthday to me. We have a cake and they bring out this present for me. And so I open the box and here is a whole set of pots and pans. And I just began to weep and to cry. And the Lord, you know, just, they think I'm happy about the pots and pans, but it was such a wave of the love of God. Like, Becky, I love you. I know what you want. And, and for years, from years, whenever this condemnation would come to me or this desire, this thing that, you know, my, about my children or about our finances or about a need for a miracle, this thought would come, Becky, if I care about pots and pans, how much more do I care about your children? How much more do I care about your healing? How much more do I care about your calling of God? How many of you think God is worthy? He's worthy. He loves us. He's a good God. And he knows what we want. That's a good story, right? So, um, 10 years later after that, 10 years later after that, Jim and I find this home. And really, it's the dream, my dream home. I had made a list of things, and we had been looking for eight years for a home, and I, we just couldn't find it, something that Jim and I both really appreciated and loved, and, and so we were just going to stay where we were at. And, and one day, we just came across this house, and it was amazing. And literally, within just days, we qualified, we sold our other home, and we moved in. It was the craziest God thing ever. And so it's very modern, so everything's white. And so I had this lady come in, and she was just going from room to room to paint the house and paint the cabinets and paint the trim and paint the doors. And she got to the kitchen. Now, we've been in the house for maybe a month by now. And she got to the kitchen, and she's pulling stuff out of the cabinets to paint. And, and there was a drawer under the stovetop, but um, the bottom drawer wouldn't open, so we thought it was a fake drawer because it wouldn't open, but the t one on top of it did. And so she took that one drawer out 
to take stuff out of it, to, to paint the inside of it. And she's like, Pastor Becky, there's something in this bottom drawer. It's not a fake drawer. It's just a broken drawer. And literally, I went over there to get him, and I start pulling these things out. And I, I, I freeze. Like, I'm, I'm, I can't move. I can't speak. I can't talk. Because in that bottom drawer was a whole set of stainless steel Wolfgang Puck pots and pans. Well, I mean, like the stainless steel with his signature on the bottom of them. And I just like begin to shake. And I find the number of the woman who we bought the house from and I call her up and I'm saying, ma'am, you left a whole set of pots and pans in this drawer under the stove. She's like, oh, I don't want those. I bought those 10 years ago on Home Shopping Network. So like at the same time, that I was trying to manipulate and make things happen and twist God's hand and and make my life. Some of you are twisting and you're trying to make things happen for your marriage, for your work, for, for, you know, for every, you're just, we just try to make things happen. But God has already, let me tell you, God has already gone into your future. 10 years later from that moment, I bought a house. With Wolfgang Puck pots and pans in it. How many of you know that God had already prepared that house and those and he had those pots and pans in there to say, if you have any doubt that God loves you, that God has already gone into the future, he knows what you need before you even know what you need yourself. And he knows the desires of your heart. And he loves you so much. The love of God is so overwhelming. He has gone into your future to prepare the way for you. He is waiting for you 10 years down the road with whatever it is that you don't even know that you need yet. Let me tell you, God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you.